Now that the dust has settled on Autodesk's decision to pull Showcase from the design collection and completely discontinue it, the question still gets asked from a lot of frustrated and confused customers out there, and that is, well, I use Showcase for my workflow. I used its niche and unique functionality to get a job done. You've pulled it, you've cancelled it. What is the alternative? Uh, now that the dust has settled, there still is not an answer to that question. So I'm not gonna get into that in too much detail. I have done a dedicated video talking about Showcase being discontinued, but the options are, you go and subscribe to something else, which is absolutely unacceptable to suggest to somebody who used Showcase previously. Uh, you could use cloud rendering. However, Inventor doesn't support that, a GG thumbs up Autodesk. And the only other real alternative is to use Inventor Studio, which is the focus of this video. However, Inventor Studio is a colossal scrotum sack of wank. It's unreliable, buggy, glitchy, unintuitive, clunky, and just full of holes. It's awful to use. So today's video is, dear Autodesk, for the love of all that's holy, can you please invest the dev time that is desperately needed to make Inventor Studio at least work at a fundamental level? Because right now, it's awful. And this video was spawned because I was trying to create a new TFI video on Inventor Studio, a new tutorial, uh, an updated version of the one I've already done, which was quite popular. And after wasting five hours of my life, I had to completely cancel that video. I was not able to put something together of the quality I expect from my YouTube channel because the software would not let me put anything together of any reasonable quality. It kept crashing out. It was just glitchy. It wouldn't make any sense. I was doing things that I couldn't explain. I was doing stuff and fumbling my way through, but I couldn't explain what I'd done because I had no idea what was happening. It's awful, absolutely awful. And what makes me even more irate about the situation is when I see Autodesk running ads like this, which you may have seen before my videos, for example. It's an Autodesk uh, campaign ad promoting the benefits of buying Autodesk software, claiming that if you indeed pirate their software and download hooky software, it's going to be full of malware and viruses, uh, viruses uh, which could lead to uh, the loss of work, unreliability, uh, project delays, that, that kind of thing, insinuating that if you buy order software and stay genuine, then you're going to be absolutely 100% up and reliable, which is an insult to Autodesk customers in general. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let me guess. Looking to get hold of some Autodesk software, right? You ought to make sure that it's genuine. I know a pirate version might look like a good deal, but until you consider the risks, you want to be professional and productive, don't you? Then technical errors mess it all up. And unfortunately, that's what you get when you use counterfeit software. It can have viruses or hidden malware that can drastically slow down your performance. And that means problems for your project and your clients. And how annoying is it when your virus scanner keeps on holding you up? Hmm. So what I'm going to do in this video is uh, just try and drive that point home, that Inventor Studio, given that it is now the only option for an Inventor user to create a decent render uh, out of their design. It urgently needs some dev time, like really seriously badly needs some dev time. I'm not going to create a massive laundry list of issues either. That, I shit you not, would take me hours. I've got a massive list of issues with Inventor Studio. I'm just going to show you one, a textbook example of why Inventor Studio is just unacceptable in its current state and why it's unusable for most people. In fact, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to use. I, I could not suggest anybody uses this in its current form. So we're going to start a new IPT and it just... I can see people, you know, the Autodesk development team scrambling. To, right, we must reproduce this problem. Do not get hung up on this one issue. This is one of many issues. I'm not interested in being told how to work around this one issue because solving this one issue does not make Inventor Studio good. This is just a textbook example of why it's bad. So we're going to create a new model. It doesn't matter what it is, to be honest. Like it could be anything. So I'm just going to create a, a freeform solid, you know, 75 by 50 by 100. Uh, by four by four by four, whatever. Just something that looks aesthetically pleasing. Let's grab uh, one of the points and then let's put a, a, a nice a nice bump on it. So, I don't know, the texture looks nice. And then we'll put uh, a gold metal appearance on it. That looks nice. That looks nice. It looks render worthy. And this would be the point where you would port it across the showcase with the direct connect engine, all that marketing, 
all that market and money you spent on showcasing and how it, it seamlessly integrates with Inventor and all your design iterations, update your renders and stuff. What a waste of time and money that was. Just to cancel it all. I mean, what? On, who? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, this would be the point you go across to uh, showcase. We don't have that. So we've got a primer for Inventor Studio. So let's turn on the realistic uh, visual style. Let's turn on shadows and let's change this over to perspective and then crank it over to Inventor Studio and let that take over. All right, so I need to make a decent render. I need to set the scene. I need to set the scene. I want to put a light on it because I need it to, uh, I want it to look ambient. So let's put a local light into the model. Let's make this uh, a point light. We'll drop that onto the lump and then we'll source the light just a little bit higher than the lump. Uh, in terms of illumination, I want it to be quite bright. I want it to be sort of a pinkish glow and I want the light to scatter over the surface. So we'll grab the attenuation and sort of, yeah, that looks quite phallic. <laughs> It's like, it looks like it's either a nipple or a spot. <laughs> it's like a big pimple sticking out of something. Anyway, click OK. Uh, and I need to set the environment because we've just got this boring grey background. So we need to play around with the studio lighting style. So let's see what we've got here. So we're currently working with grey room. Uh, but let's see what photo booth looks like. Mm, not all that keen on photo booth. Let's spin that around. The shadow looks all right, but the background's still a bit grey. So let's go back into studio lighting styles back into global let's enable grid light and then boom you want to be professional and productive don't you you ought to make sure that it's genuine and how annoying is it inventor studio simply by changing the lighting style inventor studio just goes nah no sir rebob have it at you all your work is lost you'll notice i didn't save that uh, there wasn't really anything there that I was doing which would trigger uh, something in my mind to say, right, I need to go and save this before I do this. I was simply changing the lighting style in Inventor Studio. It shit its pants and I've lost all my work. Like I said, I'm not interested in being told how to work around this one problem. This is one issue of many with Inventor Studio. Uh, and it's, it's awful to use, horrible to use. All of the dialog boxes within Inventor Studio make no sense. Well, the most of them, they don't make any sense. The way you manipulate triads and, and axes and planes and move components and make constraints and parameters available to be animated, it just doesn't make any sense at all. And the in-product guidance is not great. It just needs overhaul. But the, the thing is with Inventor Studio, let's open up another part. Let's jump across Inventor Studio and let's not make this entirely negative because I don't want it to be. I want inventor studio to be good really do it has the core the foundation and the fundamentals in it already to be amazing look what you can do you can create local lights you can animate local lights we can put spotlights all around this at different colors we can put different cameras in we've got an entire video producer built into this we've got an animation timeline where we can stagger different events over a timeline we can animate components moving around the scene we can fade components in and out we can change the value of constraints over a timeline we can take an angular constraint and animate it from zero to nine degrees over the first five seconds and take another constraint and move that over the next 10 seconds we can animate parameters so you can change the physical size of components in an animation stretch and, and expand components and size over an animation. It has so much potential, but using it is, is terrible. It's an awful experience. And unless you save your work after every single click, you, you, you're playing with fire using Inventor Studio. It's, uh, it's horrible. What I was trying to do for my Inventor Studio tutorial was a simple animate components. Uh, it's not an assembly, so I can't animate any components. Um, but trying to take something and move it from one point to another was practically impossible. It was practically impossible. Every, uh, every action that you would think you would need to do to move something from one point to another just didn't make any sense. It wasn't working. It was flipping things backwards and forwards. It was You were typing in a number and it wasn't doing what it should have done. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible horrible to use the final render as well it's just not great these options here just aren't great <sighs> I, don't, I don't i don't know i don't know i just find it i just find it needs polish it needs polish it should you should just take what you had in showcase and put it in here integrate showcase into inventor there's an idea put the bloody engine of showcase into inventor easier said than done i assume but you've you had this technology which was amazing 
and you've just cancelled it, completely cancelled it, and what you've left us with is subpar. It's worse than what you've taken away. Either way, either way, now that Inventor Studio is literally the only option for Inventor users to create a render without having to spend X amount of money on other products. Can you just please, dear Autodesk, can you just please invest a bit of dev time into making this half decent? And I don't mean, I don't mean adding extra things in that it doesn't have. I mean, make what it's got work, please. It needs it. Your customers deserve it. Now that you've taken away Showcase and this is what they've been left with, they deserve this to be able to work. So I'm going to leave that there. That's uh, the first ever Dear Autodesk video on my channel. I think this one's overdue. Uh, if you like what I do on TFI, do by all means, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I do training courses on Pluralsight as well. I have done an inventor visualization and graphics course over on Pluralsight, which kind of fits in with making stuff look nice in Inventor, taking you through all the graphical options and all the styles and uh, shadows and reflections and stuff. So I've done an entire training course on Pluralsight on that. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video for a free trial if you want to do that. That, this, that is my affiliate link. I'll get a small kickback if you sign up for a free trial. So that's another way of supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.